do you think seeing a therapist or psychiatrist would be helpful, but don't have the time to actually find one and meet with them, or can't afford them? Try our sponsor, Talkspace. By doing everything online, Talkspace has made getting the help you want easy, accessible, and affordable. Therapy can help you shift your perspective, find tools to cope in difficult times, and be a guiding light. And at Talkspace.com, you can sign up online and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you, typically within 48 hours. There's no need to commute to appointments, miss time at work, or line up childcare in order to attend sessions. It's mental health care made easy. As a listener of this podcast, you'll get $100 off of your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash optimal. To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash optimal to get $100 off of your first month and show your support for the show. That's Talkspace.com slash optimal. This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2065. Muscle Confusion. Does Changing Workouts Mean Faster Gains? Part 1 by Christian Finn of MuscleEvo.net. And I'm Dr. Neil Malik, your host and narrator. Thanks so much for joining me once again. And today will be the start of one of our longer posts, which means I'll split the reading up between today and tomorrow's episodes. And this topic is something that's still debated. I don't want to steal Christian's thunder. So for now, let's get right to part one as we optimize your life. Muscle Confusion, Does Changing Workouts Mean Faster Gains? Part 1 by Christian Finn of MuscleEvo.net Muscle confusion is based on the idea that muscle growth is best achieved by keeping your muscles guessing and constantly switching things up. Some workout routines recommend varying your exercises on a weekly basis, while others tell you to change things every day. By continually mixing things up, your body is forced to respond. The plateaus you get with regular training programs are avoided entirely, putting you on the path to rapid muscle growth. Or so the theory goes, anyway. Is it true that your muscles won't continue to grow unless you keep them confused? Is muscle confusion really the best way to build muscle? The History of Muscle Confusion The term muscle confusion first became popular with programs like P90X, which promotes the idea that constantly changing your workouts will confuse your muscles and help you avoid plateaus. However, the notion that more variety equals more results has been around for a lot longer than P90X. The first time I came across the idea was back in the 1980s, where muscle confusion was one of Joe Wider's infamous wider training principles. Here's how the muscle confusion training principle was described back in the 1988 edition of Joe Wider's bodybuilding system. Quote, Part of constant growth is never allowing your body to fully adapt to one specific training routine. Muscles should never accommodate. To grow, they need stress. If you constantly vary exercises, sets, reps, and angle of pull upon your muscles, they can never accommodate and adjust to the stress upon them. One of my strong beliefs is, to keep your muscles growing and changing, you must confuse them. End quote. Can muscle confusion trick your muscles into growing? Although muscle confusion has been talked about for decades, it's only in recent years that researchers have put the idea to the test. They rounded up a group of men, all of whom had been lifting weights for at least two years, and assigned them to one of two groups. Both groups lifted weights four times a week, following an upper-lower split routine. They also did the same number of sets for each muscle group, with each set taken to volitional failure in the 6 to 12 rep range. The key difference between the two groups was that the fixed exercise group performed the same exercises in the same order. Group 2, on the other hand, used a special iPhone app that made a random selection from a database of 80 possible exercises. The randomization algorithm was written to select three pulling, meaning pull-up, lat pull-down, and pull-over exercises, and three pushing exercises, like bench press, standing military press, and dumbbell flies for the upper body, with no exercise repeated within the same workout. For the lower body, the algorithm chose three exercises with greater participation of the anterior chain, meaning exercises like 
squats, leg extensions, and leg presses, and three for the posterior chain, things like deadlifts, hip thrusts, and leg curls. The result? After eight weeks, there was no statistically significant difference in muscle growth between the two groups. Randomly switching exercises from workout to workout delivered no additional gains in size or strength. In fact, when you dig deeper into the results, it was the fixed exercise group that saw the biggest gain. Rectus femoris, one of the four muscles that make up the quadriceps, grew more than three times faster in the fixed exercise group. Gains in two of the other heads of the quadriceps were also roughly 50% greater in the fixed exercise group. In other words, randomly changing exercises every workout isn't going to accelerate your results. You'll often do just as well sticking with the same routine from one week to the next. Does muscle soreness mean muscle growth? One of the things you'll notice when you start doing different exercises is feeling sore and stiff for a day or two after the workout. You went to the gym yesterday. Today, your muscles feel sore. That must mean your workout was an effective one and that growth is sure to follow. On the flip side, if you've stopped feeling sore, you need to switch things up if you want to get your muscles growing again. Or do you? In fact, when high and low soreness training programs have been put to the test, both deliver similar gains in muscle mass. While doing lots of different exercises may leave you feeling sore the next day, it won't automatically shock a muscle into growth. The fact that your muscles feel sore after a workout doesn't mean they're going to grow any faster. There's very little evidence to show that muscle soreness is a reliable indicator of muscle damage, that being sore means faster muscle growth, or that A lack of soreness means that your workout wasn't effective. When you introduce a new exercise into your routine, you'll tend to get stronger relatively quickly. But this isn't because you've suddenly gained a lot of new muscle. Instead, the reason people make rapid improvements in strength with a new exercise is that their nervous system gets better at recruiting muscle fibers. It's not necessarily because the fibers themselves have gotten any bigger. To be continued. You just listened to part one of the post titled Muscle Confusion. Does changing workouts mean faster gains? By Christian Finn of MuscleEvo.net. Think about someone who has changed your life for the better. How incredible would it be if your company could find more of those life-changing people right when you needed them? If you're hiring, you need Indeed. Indeed is the hiring platform helping over 3 million businesses worldwide to do it all. Don't spend hours on multiple job sites looking for candidates. Over 80% of Indeed employers find quality candidates the moment they sponsor a job. I especially love Indeed's Instant Match feature because candidates you invite to apply through Instant Match are three times more likely to apply to your job than candidates who only see it in search, according to US Indeed data. Indeed knows that finding people with the right skills makes all the difference when you're a hiring team of one. Visit indeed.com health to start hiring now. Just go to indeed.com slash health, indeed.com slash health. Terms and conditions apply. Cost per application pricing not available for everyone. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Now, does this mean that you should never change your workouts? No. Instead, we just may not need to stress about changing the exercises we perform as frequently as we may think. So it may be more about keeping some of the same exercises and gradually changing the weight, like increasing the weight, to help the muscles grow over time. Oh, and going back to the quote from Joe Wider's bodybuilding system, did you catch one of the things that Joe Wider said? He said, one of my strong beliefs is to keep your muscles growing, you must confuse them. It's probably not the greatest idea when it comes to exercise science or nutrition, to base your ideas on someone's beliefs. Rather, we want to look at the research, which is exactly what Christian Finn did in today's article. Now, I don't want to steal his thunder, but we're going to talk more about this idea of helping the muscles grow over time through maybe messing with the weight. But I'm going to stop there because we'll hear more about this tomorrow. So that should do it for today. Thank you for being a subscriber of the show. I hope you have a great rest of your day and I'll see you back here tomorrow where we'll finish up this post as promised and where your optimal life awaits.